on behalf of Cambridge Innovation Institute's Global Web Symposia series and our sponsor, Eurofins DiscoverX, I'd like to welcome you to Cytotoxicity Bioassays, Measuring Antibody-Mediated Direct Cell Death. My name is Elizabeth Lamb, and I'm the host and moderator for today's webinar. Our first presenter is Jane Lamerton, PhD, Vice President, R&D Department with Eurofins Discover X. And our second presenter is Erica Kovac, PhD, Director, Bioassays with Abzina. Welcome, Dr. Kovac, Dr. Lemmerden. The webinar is yours. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for that introduction and really appreciate the opportunity to share our portfolio here to describe the use of cytotoxicity assays for measuring antibody-mediated cell death. And so I'd like to begin by introducing Eurofins DiscoverX. For those of you who are not aware of us, we have been a global leader in the development of cell-based assays for screening, profiling, development of relative potency assays for over 20 years. And We've done this initially by generating over 1,500 different cell lines that evaluate the biology of a variety of different targets, such as GPCRs and RTKs. And a number of those assays, over 55, have actually been qualified with therapeutic drugs, either client-specific or drugs that are on the market. And so many of these are actually available off the shelf. And so these assays have been developed following ICH guidelines, of course, and we have a team that is focused on the development and a support of these assays. And indeed, for a number of molecules, we have actually done custom method development and transfer of those assays to a variety of different CROs globally. And indeed, we have over 100 global programs that we're supporting with our assays, where the assays are being utilized for relative potency, evaluation of stability, and NAB testing. So many of these programs that we have been supporting are for therapeutic monoclonal antibodies. And as this picture shows over here, it was recently published that the FDA has reached a milestone of approving its 100th monoclonal antibody product. So from this, we can see how important this particular class of biological therapeutics is and that the need is out there for antibodies to evaluate this important drug class. This particular type of therapeutic can have multiple functions. And some of these functions are mediated not only by the FAB portion of the antibody, but by the FC domain. And this is known as effector-mediated functions. So many of these therapeutic antibodies work by activating ADCC, or antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. And a number of other effector-mediated functions, such as ADCP or CDC, are mediated through the interaction of different immune cells. So one element is assessing whether these antibodies can actually mediate these different effector functions. And this is important from a safety perspective, as well as in development of therapeutic antibodies that are meant to mediate ADCC. So these molecules typically need to be evaluated very early on during development, starting in phase one or possibly even earlier. And a number of assay formats are required to evaluate effector function, which will be covered, most of these will actually be covered in Erica's portion of the talk. So cytotoxicity assays are an important part of the development and assessment of effector-mediated functions such as ADCC. And there are a number of cytotoxicity assays out there, but some of these have some drawbacks, if you will. For example, assays that are based on radioactivity or fluorescent dye-based assays have the challenge of being inherently leaky, where they can actually be pumped out of the, of the cell from certain target cells. 
and this leads to less robust assays and often high backgrounds. But we have developed a platform which we refer to as Killer that is non-radioactive and also non-leaky and we'll describe why that is in a few moments. And the importance of this is that it leads to lower background in the assay and better assay windows in general. Another challenge with many of these assays that are that they are somewhat low throughput and they restrict the ability to do screening in a high throughput format. And so that can reduce the use of these types of assays for characterization of antibodies at an earlier stage. So the advantage of the killer cytotoxicity platform is that's actually compatible with both 96 and 384 well format. And that eases the implementation of an assay such as this screening and continuing to use it in late stage for, for lot release if that's appropriate. Additionally, there are many assays out there that are used that are referred to as surrogate assays. And these are primarily binding assays that evaluate activation of a reporter upon binding of the, of the antibody. And while these assays are quite robust and have large assay windows, they're not considered MOA reflective in the sense that they don't promote um, target cell killing. Um, so they're considered re predictive, but not necessarily MOA reflective. So the advantage of using the killer platform is that these assays are endpoint assays that specifically measure target cell death and are therefore considered physiologically relevant. And then finally, one of the challenges with implementing cytotoxicity assays, particularly for lot release, is that high donor to donor variability associated with the particular effector cells that are being utilized is a challenge for producing reproducibility over time. So one way we have addressed that is by implementing a particular engineered effector cell that is still based on a primary cell from a single uh, donor. And so this particular effector cell eliminates donor to donor variability, but produces very high reproducibility over time. So the platform we'll be talking about today is based on our proprietary technology that has been around for quite a long time and was initially established for the use in diagnostic assays. And this is known as enzyme fragment complementation or EFC. An EFC is based on a very simple concept where it is a fragmented beta galactosidase reporter. So you can think of it as this lock and key system here where we have an enzyme donor and we have an enzyme acceptor. And in the absence of binding, this has very low signal. But when the two fragments are brought into close proximity, then they form an active enzyme. And we can detect the presence of that active enzyme by adding our detection reagent, which results in the production of a chemiluminescent signal. So there are many advantages to this particular technology, particularly for the development of assays for screening and lot release. And so these are highlighted here at the bottom. The most important perhaps is that it is a homogeneous assay format. So if we compare this to other cytotoxicity formats that are out there, it's a simple add and read format. There's no media exchange. There's no moving of your, your sample to another plate. It's a very simple assay protocol. Importantly, it has very sensitive detection because it's an enzymatically amplified assay resulting in high precision and accuracy. And as such, we see very large dynamic ranges with these assays and excellent assay reproducibility. Importantly, this luminescence readout is very readily read on a variety of different readers that are typically found in standard labs, particularly at CRO labs. And all of these attributes combined make these assays very easy to transfer. The development of the assays that we work with produ produces a very similar protocol for a variety of assays, which makes it very straightforward to transfer to other sites. So I'd like to give you an overview of what this killer cytotoxicity assay is that we've been referring to. 
And as we mentioned, it's a very easy to use assay that specifically measures target cell depth. And the way that we do this is we engineer the target cell of interest that either endogenously expresses the target of interest, the majority of our models do, or we can also engineer overexpression of a particular target. And into those cells, we introduce our ED tagged, in this case, we call it EPL, tagged reporter protein, which happens to be a housekeeping protein that's very well tolerated by every cell type that we've actually worked with. So to date, we have over 40 of these different cell models that are stably expressing this reporter in our portfolio. And we've developed a number as custom assays for a number of clients as well. So we've actually worked with probably closer to 75 different models so far. And it, it seems to be quite transferable to different cell models. So the next st stage is to opsonize these uh, target cells with our antibody of interest and then combine that with the effector cells of interest. So this particular platform is compatible with a variety of effector cells. You can use primary PBMCs or primary NK cells. If you have an NK92 cell line, you can use that. It's obvious it's compatible with CAR-T, but for ADCC, these other effector types, as well as our killer CD16 effectors, are appropriate for mediating ADCC. And so, of course, what happens is once the, these components are all added together and incubated, then the effectors mediate cell death by ADCC, and that releases our tagged protein into the media. And then what we do is we add our detection reagent, which contains the complementing EA that I described before, and that results in complementation, and we can detect that on production of luminescence, which then we can detect on our fleet reader. So as I mentioned, the platform is compatible with a variety of effector cells. And so if you choose, you may use uh, primary cells that you've already characterized and, and a number of groups do so. Of course, one of the challenges with that is that, we're, as we're all aware, we can see very high donor to donor variability with uh, primary PBMCs and NK cells. PBMCs themselves are a heterogeneous population of cells. And that combination can sometimes result in a lot of variability in the assay. Even within the same donor, you can sometimes see lot to lot variability in, in terms of the performance of, of ADCC assays. And our experience also is that you also see somewhat higher background killing with. NK cells. So one thing, as I already mentioned, we have done to improve the assay performance is to utilize a single donor derived cytotoxic T cells that have been engineered to express the CD16 receptor. So this is the same receptor that's expressed naturally on NK cells, but not normally found cytotoxic T cells. But by expressing the CD16, we're essentially able to form the same immunological synapse that would occur between your antibody and your target antigen. And this triggers the same release of perforins and granzymes and cytokines that you would normally see with NK cells that then result in lysis of our target cells. And we can then detect that. And this importantly eliminates one of the most important aspects of using primary cells, and that's the donor to donor variability. We're able to manufacture these cells very routinely and robustly, and this allows us to see very low lot-to-lot -lot variability, in fact, lower than what we would see between multiple donors. The other advantage is that we get typically very low background killing, which with most, most of the cell models that we've evaluated so far, and we see very rapid killing kinetics with these effector cells. And importantly, we also see very low analyst to analyst variability with these effectors. So if we combine these engineered effectors with now an assay ready format for our target cells, this results in even more controlled and robust performance of our ADCC assays. So this is just showing you the workflow for our current Raji ADCC bioassay kit where we provide these cryopreserved target cells. We thaw them, wash them, and count them. And on the same day, we plate them. 
followed by opsonization with our antibody. We add our effector cells, which we also thaw and prepare. In, in the case of the CD16 effectors, we prepare them a week in advance. And then we actually incubate the effector cells for four hours before adding our detection reagent for an hour. So in total, the ADCC assay itself can be run and data collected in under eight hours. And all of the reagents that are required for uh, running the assay, with the exception of the effectors, are found in the bioassay kit itself. And of course, these are cells that are manufactured to particular specs. They're evaluated by our quality team and a certificate of analysis, as well as a user manual are provided for their use. So I will quickly share some of the data that was developed during the development and establishment of the assay protocol and the kit itself. So the data here on the left is contrasting our continuous culture model of, in this case, the Raji cells with the ready to use cells. And what you can see is that we have a very similar dose curve. In fact, the major difference between the two formats is the assay window, but we still see quite a robust assay window with our assay ready cells. And the EC50 is identical, actually. Importantly, if we look at percent killing or the percent ADCC, what we see is that there is no significant difference between the continuous culture and the assay ready cells. So we see comparable killing and performance between both the continuous culture and the ready to use format. So we've shown that these assay ready cells in combination with our killer CD16 effectors can be used for screening and rank ordering of antibodies. So one example is shown here with a, a variety of different CD20 antibodies that we've looked at. And I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but if we just compare, for example, the difference between antibodies, when we look at the wild type FC region of rituximab, which is shown here in the dark blue, and contrast that with an afucosylated version of uh, the same antibody, which is shown in this bright blue curve, we see that we can detect quite a significant difference in potency. Similarly, if we look at two different antibodies with different FAB regions, which would be contrasting obinutuzumab to rituximab, shown here in the pink and the blue, we're able to detect those differences as well. And of course, importantly, if we look at an FC null variant of rituximab, we see that it is inactive, just as our isotype control is. So all of the attributes that we would want to be able to detect and quantify when screening antibodies can be performed using the, the killer Raji bioassay, which discriminates the differences in both FAB and effector regions of related antibodies. So another important aspect of looking at bioassay cells is how repeatable the performance is. So here we show data from a single analyst who performed the assay on three different days using the same lot of target cells and the same lot of effector cells. And what you can see is that the curves look quite similar. Indeed, the EC50s vary by less than 10%, and the signal to background is varying by about 12%. So we have excellent interday uh, reproducibility. And importantly, if different analysts run the same assay, again, using the same uh, bioassay cells from the same lot, we see very, very comparable performance. So the dose curves look nearly identical, signal to background is quite similar, and the AC50s are, are just spot on. So quickly, we have performed an interim qualification with rituximab to, to demonstrate that the assay is suitable for relative potency. And over a range of 150 to 50 to 150, pardon me, we see that we get excellent dilutional linearity in the assay. The recovery, repeatability, and intermediate precision are all within the specifications of what we would expect. And we are expecting to complete this qualification quite soon, but at least the preliminary data demonstrates that the, we have acceptable accuracy, repeatability, intermediate precision, and dilutional linearity with this assay. So I'll just summarize by saying that the killer cytotoxicity platform offers MOA-based assays for a variety of cell-mediated cytotoxicity applications. 
Our killer CD16 effector cells offer a unique solution to solve the donor-to-donor -donor variability issues when sourcing effector cells. The killer Raji bioassay allows discrimination of differences in the FAB and FC regions to enable rank ordering of antibodies. And finally, the killer Raji bioassay provides appropriate repeatability, accuracy, and intermediate precision to allow implementation for relative potency or characterization. So at this point, I will hand off to my colleague, Erica Kovacs, who will talk about the use of killer assays to study FC-mediated fungus. So thank you very much, Jane. Uh, this was a really exciting talk and demonstrating how the killer Raji bioassay target cells can be used for ADCC lot release. I will also show you some of the ADCC data that we have generated in-house at Abzina, as well as show some results from phagocytosis and complement-dependent cytotoxicity assays. So as you are well aware there are multiple ways how therapeutic antibodies can target tumor cells. The obvious one is a direct effect on the tumor cell, but they can also in many ways stimulate the immune system uh, to eliminate the, tu the tumor cell. For example, uh, complement dependent cytotoxicity. In this case, the uh, opsonized targets are eliminated by the activation of the complement cas cascade. In ADCC, the opsonized targets will recruit NK effector cells, which will cause the lysis of the tumor cell. And in case of ADCP, macrophages of the immune system will be recruited and phagocytose the tumor cell. So if your mode of action for your specific therapeutic antibody is one of these FC-mediated functions, then you will definitely need an assay which will be able to uh, quantify these effects. Even if your mode of action is not including any of these FC-mediated functions, you will likely be required to perform these assays when you get to drug filing because regulators will like to see that the drug is safe and does not mediate any of these functions. So in order to test and be able to quantify all of these functions at Abzina, we've developed a complete package which involves ADCC, ADCP, and CDC assays using primary effectors as well as reporter assays and binding assays. And we thought that the new killer platform, especially in its essay ready kit format, would be really well suitable for our clients and for many of, of those projects. We decided to, in collaboration with Eurofins, assess these in house. So today I will show you some of this data that we've generated, and I will start with the ADCC assays. So in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of the different formats, which Jane has also touched upon uh, briefly, so I'm just going to go through it fairly quickly here. The PBMC-based assay, which was the original traditional way uh, to measure ADCC, uses PBMCs as effectors. And you can have various readouts in order to detect cell lysis. What we typically use is a flow cytometry based readout. However, if you've tried to perform these assays before, then you know that they can be quite challenging and the donor to donor variability with PBMCs is a major issue. So these are so the, the closest you can get to an in vivo system with performing an in vitro assay, but they are challenging. So alternatively, if you're looking for a more sensitive and reproducible assay, then what you can do is run a reporter assay. However, the issue with these type of assays is that it is only a surrogate readout for ADCC potential, but does not directly measure cell killing. So often times when you're running these type of assays, you will still be required from the regulators to do a bridging study with with a PBMC-based assay. So that is where the killer immune lysis reaction, the killer assays formed by, developed by DiscoverX come in. 
because they are directly they directly measure cell death while at the same time they provide a sensitive readout so at the moment there are lots of available target models such as cell pools but also cell lines are available as bioassay kits as well the kit is compatible with various type of immunofactor cells, as Jane has mentioned. I will show you today some data on the CD16 killer effectors as well as some PBMCs. So how an ADCC assay setup would occur in, in any type of lab, you would start by titrating your antibody and using that titration of antibody to opsonize your target cells. Then you would mix with your effectors, such as PBMCs, co-incubate for three to four hours, and then use your selected readout to measure cell lysis. So as mentioned, there's quite a wide variety of readouts you can use. Traditionally, can be fluorescent dye exclusion, dead cell protease activity, flow cytometry, for example. You would typically optimize your ETT ratios using your positive control, and then once you're happy with the way the assay is performing for that positive control, you would proceed to sample testing in the ADCC assay using three different, well, we typically suggest using three different PBMC donors. So the difference or the slight variation in terms of using the killer readout is that your target cells are engineered to express the killer reporter protein. And once the cells are lysed, for example, through an ADCC mechanism, then this porter protein will get out into the medium. And once you add the killer detection reagent, and the enzyme fragment uh, complementation will occur, and that will result in an active enzyme, which will hydrolyze a substrate and form a, a chemiluminescent signal. So the advantage, as I've mentioned before, is that the assay is quite sensitive and robust, similar to a reporter assay, while at the same time, it is measuring target cell lysis by PBMCs. So what we have done at Epsina is tested out the killer Raji bioassay target cells using the clinical benchmark rituximab, and we have tested these with both the killer CD16 effectors as well as our in-house PBMCs. And here you can see the results that we have obtained. So on the top row is the first experiment and then the same analyst performing the same experiment on a different day. In the first column, you can see the results obtained with the killer CD16 effectors. What is immediately obvious is that the background is very low and you practically get complete cell killing with these effectors. And error bars are very small, very clear, very good assay. You see similar, well, quite good assay windows also with the PBMC effectors. The background is slightly higher. Maximum cell killing isn't that high, but it's still quite reproducible and comparable the EC50 values for rituximab are quite similar for the two different donors and on two different days. So after we have seen these, this performance in the ADCC assay, we were very keen to test out the system in some of our other FC-mediated assays as well, typically phagocytosis, because that can be a, quite a challenging assay. And before we go into how we perform the assay itself, briefly, I would like to mention about how we generate our macrophages, because that is quite a key aspect of having a good phagocytosis assay, that you have good effector cells. So we use Epsina's in-house PBMC cell bank, from which we isolate monocytes. And through a one-week maturation protocol, we mature the macrophages. We have established differentiation protocols for M0, M1, and M2 macrophages. And the, as the flow cytometry results here on the right show, for the different differentiation markers, we can convert them uh, from one type to the other. 
Once we've matured these macrophages, then we can use uh, from a variety of readouts. One we typically do is an Im imaging readout by the Inky site or a flow cytometry based readout, or most recently the luminescence readout using the killer platform, which I will demonstrate in more detail. So again, very briefly, the advantages and disadvantages of the different formats that you can choose. So with the Incusite real-time imaging system, what you are doing is loading the target cells with a pH-sensitive dye. And as they phagocytose and get into the lysosomal compartments, they will light up. And that is something that you can visualize in real time. So with this type of method, you can do some very cool experiments and get some very nice videos such as here, I'll show you in a sec. So here again, the small red dots are the Rogis that are loaded with this dye and the adherent cells are the, the macrophages. And as they phagocytose the red cells, then you see this bright, intense uh, red dye appear which practically the, the Raji cells being, being phagocytosed and getting into the lysosome. So as you can imagine, the, the data analysis that is required to get the quantitative readout from these type of assays can take quite a long time. So the assay is not high throughput. For high throughput assays, we can do flow cytometry based assays. In this case, we would label the cells, the target and the effector cells with two different dyes, and then look at uh, the double positive events by flow cytometry. Now, the issue you may have here is that not all of the events that you're counting are phagocytosis, you're also measuring the binding events. So again, this is where the killer assays good sweet spot because they do measure degradation of the target cells. That's the only way you can get the signal out of it. No binding events will not give you a signal. And it can be performed in a high throughput manner and they give large assay windows. So these are the assays that are most suited for candidate ranking. So a bit more detail of how these, uh, how the killer readout works in case of an ADCP assay. So again, you're starting with target cells that express the killer reporter protein. You opsonize them, mix with the macrophages. And once the macrophages phagocytose these target cells, they will degrade the target cells and the killer reporter protein as well. So when your assay is finished, you lyse the complete cell mixture and look at the amount of fluorescence that is remaining. And the lower quantities of the killer reporter protein will be correlated with the ADCP activity. So in this case, you are looking at a loss of signal. And with the appropriate controls, you can convert that to percentage ADCP and you can get the following results. Again, this is done with two different macrophage donors, so from two healthy PBMCs originally. And you see practically low background for rituximab and almost complete phagocytosis for this benchmark. And the background for the isotype control is very low, again, close to zero. So we have shown that the assay uh, performs in a sensitive and robust manner to measure phagocytic activity as well. So last but not least, the final FC-mediated vector function that we are really keen to, to try out as well is CDC. So the CDC assay is quite similar to the ADCC assay in terms of you titrate uh, your test antibodies, opsonize your target cells, and then mix with normal human serum, which will include the active complement components. After you perform your target cell seeding density optimization, uh, you're practically ready to go with this assay. It's a fairly simple setup. So normally what we use as readout is dead cell protease activity 
And if you compare that dead cell protease readout to the killer readout, you see that very similar results are obtained for rituximab. Again, the killer assay performs in a, in a quite sensitive and robust manner. And while rituximab and Wagi are fairly easy to use in a CDC assay, the other potentially more challenging cell targets, the killer platform could prove to be very beneficial because it is a very specific signal you are getting out in this case from the target cells. So to summarize, the killer platform is a simple assay format to directly measure ADCC, ADCP, as well as CDC. The assays are robust and sensitive and offer a means of measuring directly target cell lysis or phagocytosis. doses. Furthermore, the ready-to-use ready bioassay kits make the use of these assays e even easier and simpler. And if you need any help with these type of assays, Ebzina can offer you some support, both for mode of action studies as well as regulatory purposes. And if you would like to try these essays in your own lab, then please visit discoverx.com where you will find quite a lot of useful information of these essays. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Erica and Jane. And we'll now move into the question and answer portion. We have a question that came in during your presentation, Erica. This is from Maria. Do you know how well the CD16 effector killer cells mimic the in vivo effector function of the tested antibodies? And if so, how has it been tested? So I can probably um, try to address that. So since the CD16 effectors are expressing the, the, the CD16 receptor themselves, so that's comparable to what's expressed on NK cells, we have the, the primary test, if you will, has been to compare the performance of these effector cells to either NKs or PBMCs. We certainly haven't tested the effectors in vivo, although we have discussed doing that in animal models. So what we can say is that for all of the antibodies that we have tested, and Erica demonstrated very similar results to what we have seen with rituximab and other antibodies is that the performance is comparable in terms of EC50, but we see just more robust killing with the, the CD16 effectors. And we, you can alter the E to T ratio to more closely, like if you use fewer uh, effectors, you'll have, you know, obviously lower killing that might be more comparable to what you would get with NKs but just at a much lower E to T than you would need to use for NK cells. Perfect, thank you. We've had another question just come in from Shankar. How does one go about setting up release specifications on the ADCC assay? So we don't have the assay running yet in a, um, in a lot release program at DiscoverX, although we know we, we do have clients who are using this, but I, I don't think we've asked about specifically what release specifications they're using yet. So I don't feel I can answer this question um, as of today. All right, thank you. This one for Jane from Brian. Can KILR bioassay cell be used to evaluate killing mechanisms, C or ADCP? Yes, so we have used these uh, particular this assay format for a variety of mechanisms. So uh, T cell redirection, which we can also use our, our CD16 effectors. Obviously the CD16 isn't relevant, but we have used these in place of uh, T cells. It can also be used as Erica mentioned uh, for CDC. And we have some clients who have used these with CAR-T. And we also have done programs with clients who've used these for, for tills, for looking at the killing capacity of their tills. So it, it's a pretty flexible format as long as the antigen of interest is, is present on the target cells. The question for you, Erica, if the lead candidate is FC silent, 
Is it yep. enough to show that it does not bind the appropriate FC receptors? Or will regulators want to see a functional readout as well? Yes, thank you for that question. So ideally you would want to see, you would start with the binding assay. So you would look at binding to the receptors and then moving on from that, probably the best is to, to set up some form of a cell-based assay where you can only just test your, your main lead and show that that does not have an effect in a cell-based assay format either. So if you have a good positive control, perhaps uh, your same molecule, but in not FC silent version, uh, that is really helpful in these cases to uh, to prove to the regulators that you indeed have completely abolished the FC function. All right, thank you. This question for you, Jane, from Nina. How many assays can be run with a single killer bioassay kit? So we currently have the kits configured as 10, uh, either two plate or 10 plate kits. So that the idea is that we provide enough cells to see that each vial contains enough for one 96 well plate or one 384 well plate. So if you buy the two plate kit, then that's two vials of cells. And if it's the 10 plate, then it's, then it's uh, 10 vials of cells. All right, perfect. Erica, what are the most important positive and negative controls regulators will want to see? So the previous question, if you have an FC silent molecule, then definitely the, the wild type or the non-mutated version is have it functions as mode of action or are expressed on your same target cell. That can be uh, really good as well. If you use a, a receptor that is ubiquitously expressed on most target cell lines, that can be probably your best option. And in terms of negative controls, uh, isotype control is really useful in these assays. All right, thank you very much. For you, Jane, can the assays be run at a higher plate density, for example, 384 well? For ADCC and T cell redirection, we have run in 384 well format as, as well as 96. So I would say yes. You would just need to optimize your target cell density and the E to T ratio a little bit relative to 96 well, but definitely feasible. All right. It appears we have just one more question. This one for Erica. For a release assay, is the use of engineered effectors accepted by regulators or are primary effectors preferred? Yes, so that is definitely a shift that we're seeing recently that obviously even regulators know that using primary PBMC effectors is really challenging to use in a, in a release assay. And because of that and because of the much better, more robust response that you can get from a engineered effector. They are now much more willing to use that as a release assay. What they might ask you is to show some PBMC cell killing still as a bridging assay, but for the release assay, the effectors are, the engineered effectors are accepted these days. All right, thank you. We've had just two more questions pop up. This one for you, Jane, from Tessie. The killer target cells have only CD20 expressed, or can it be modified with other target proteins as well? So the example that we showed, which are uh, basically Raji, native Raji cells that we've introduced our reporter into, they express uh, a variety of antigens that are normally present on B cells. So they do also express CD19 and CD38, for example, and our other killer models, of which we have over 40, do have different antigens expressed on them natively. We can also engineer target models to overexpress a particular target if we don't already have that antigen of interest in the portfolio. 
So they could go into the Rajis or into a more tractable cell background if, if that's desired. So we do have custom services to do that if you are, are in need of that. Thank you. And this one I'll open to both of you from Denise. Could this technology be used for analytic evaluation on screen assays to develop new engineered antibodies? I think the answer should be yes. Erica, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me too. I definitely think that, and we have used it in the past to screen for FC effector functions and identify leads from a wider variety of candidates. That appears to be all of them. So I would like to very much thank our presenters for today, Jane Lammerden, PhD, and Erica Kovach, PhD. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Eurofins DiscoverX, for the sponsoring today's event. So with that, I would like to thank you all on behalf of Cambridge Innovation Institute webinars for attending today. We're very grateful you came and hope we provided information that will make your life a bit easier. So thank you all so very much and have a great rest of your day. be used to evaluate killing mechanisms